Hi everyone, um, this is Chauke speaking, a facilitator of building and structural construction N6 at Majuba Tivet College. I'll be taking you through the same subject and we'll be dealing with um, trust design. So this will be part 2D of our lesson. Again, you remember that we took a question from April 2011 exam question paper uh, that is question number five all right so already we have dealt with 5.1 and 5.2 and also 5.3 where we designed member a so now we want to design member b okay so you remember the question says uh, the figure below shows a connection of steel roof with forces acting on member A and B as indicated the member A and B are single discontinuous angle ion profile. Okay, take note of this one. Single discontinuous angle ion profiles. Fixed both sides to 12 millimeter gasset, uh, gassets. So here 5.3 it says like the stable equal leg angle ion profiles for member a which we did and b so with the total length of b being 1,8 meters all right using grade for the three steel so we want to determine or design for b now so for b you realize that the force is 96 kilonewtons and it's a strut right so that is our steel table so if we go to uh, here design for strut which is uh, member b now step number one is to determine the effective length how do we do that remember we are given the length as 1,8 meters right so we will need table 19 to determine the effective length all right so open page 19 where you will get t uh, table 19 open page 100 i mean where you'll get table 19 all right so you remember from the question it says uh, let's go there it says uh, remember a and b are single discontinuous okay that's what i want you to take note of a single discontinuous so let's go to the conditions here condition number one it says effectively held so the members are effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at both ends okay so this is not it because remember this one both sides are, rest uh, are restrained all right so it's not single so now let's come to this one effectively held in position at both ends restrained against so the most important thing is just the part b of the statement restrained against rotation at one end only single one single you see here so if it was double it would be both ends but here single uh, uh, it is continuous so it means that one end is free the other one is restrained can you see so that forced us to use this expression 0.85 l so that is the formula that we're going to use so effective length is what 0.85 multiplied by the total length which is 1.8 we then it gives us 1.5 Three meters all right so now we go to step number two where we're gonna choose an angle ion so I chose 70 by 70 by 10 okay and angle ion and you get that from our structural steel table So step number three, we are going to determine the allowable stress. All right. So please take note: there is a difference between 
um, a strut and a tie. All right. So the first one was a tie. This a way of de dealing with it. That's where we determine the effective length. But for the strut, where we are given the length of the strut, this is the procedure. All right. So don't mix the two. All right. So check the allowable stress. So the allowable stress now. Remember the length is what is 1,580 millimeters. Okay, that's 1.1 1, 1, 1, 1.53 meters. God, so I'm converting it to millimeters. So, uh, we want to determine the the radius of gyration. We also get it from the steel tables. So you go back to 70 by 70 by 10. Okay, let's go back 70 by 70 by 10, and then you go to this axis. Yeah, we've got x, x, and y, y, which is the same uh, properties. Uh, if you go down, I so we're not using R actually here, we're using I. Okay, so other steel tables could use R. So I is 20,9 that's our radius of gyration and for axis u u i is 26,3 and for axis vv i is 13,5 so we choose the smallest value the weakest axis here all right so that is why when you look at this now here you have R V or I V is because this value what well, we know that the weakest axis is gonna be V V. So there we go, 13,5 that is our radius of gyration. So there's a value or there's a formula here or ratio is L over R V or I V. We do, have the, we do have the effective length, which is 1530 there. And we do have the RV or IV, which is 10,5. And then we get 113,3. This is a unit, unit, unitless value. So it's called slenderness ratio. Okay. So it is equals to 13. So uh, because this uh, values here or reading here after the comma are less than five, so just gonna drop them. Okay, so then the numbers after the comma are gonna drop them because less than five. If it was 0.5, we're gonna round it to the nearest, and then that would be 114. Alright, so our value must not be a decimal one. Okay, so it must be just a whole number. So we have got 113 there. So now we understand that 113 it is the same as 130 plus 3. I mean 110 plus 3. You will see why we did this it's because the table that we're going to use, which is table 17. Which is found in page 99. If you look at here, this is the slenderness ratio, right? We have 113. We don't have 113 here, but we do have 100. All right, and then, or oh, we do have 110 rather. And then, if you continue with that 110, if you look at here now, the top uh, row, plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. We said 113 is 110 plus 3. So, if you go here, you go straight vertically, 2 plus 3, you get what? 66. Can you see? So this becomes our allowable stress. Alright, 66 MPA is our allowable stress. So we can check the force in the mem. Alright. So the exit stress is equals to force over area. And then the force is equals to stress multiplied by area. Alright. So I'm going to call it force here. So stress 
is the one that I've calculated or determined from uh, table 17, which is 66. And then the area, we have to go back to the still table here. If you come here, we said we're gonna we select we select 10 70 by 70 by 10. If you come here under A 1,309 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 meter squared. Alright, meter squared. So it's 1,309, right? So if you come here, this is where that uh, 1,309 meter squared comes from. You'll be surprised that um, using the same formula when we we're designing for A, we did not multiply by 10 to the power 6. Why now? It is because our area is in, in, in meter squared. When we're designing for A, our area was in millimeter squared. And we know that MPA is the same as Newton per millimeter squared. So millimeters for, for, for the area, millimeters for the stress. So, but here now, we are not able to leave um, 66 as it is. Why? Because it's Newton per millimeter squared. And we cannot multiply that value with meter squared here so we're converting this one mpa to newton per millimeter squared i mean sorry to meter squared okay we're converting mpa to newtons per meter squared that's why you multiply it by a million or 10 to the power 6. so now there is our area if we multiply the two we're going to get uh, 68,394 newtons. If you divide by 1,000, you're going to get 86,4 kilonewtons. So, this tells us that 70 by 70 by 10 can only manage to support 86,4 force. We compare to the one that is going to be exerted to that uh, member. It's going to be 96. We're given that the member B is going to be uh, subject to 96 kilonewtons. So you can see that this member can only take us 86. Anything more, is, it will fail. So that is why this one will not work. 70 by 70 by 10 is not sufficient. What do you do in a real uh, life situation? Go back, select another bigger member. All right, and do the same exercise until you find the member which is suitable. All right, but as I said in the exam, no need to go and do this trial and error thing. You just indicate here, if you get here, this that's it. You just indicate that your member will not be able to support, and then you continue with your work. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I believe that. Uh, it uh, brought some clarity as far as this topic is all up, is, uh, is concerned. Uh, thank you very much.